we do not ignore the things that the enemy may send our way, but rather we use it to develop our faith and we use it to encourage and strengthen us in the Lord and to enrich and empower us in God. The Bible says that wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil of the enemy, the testing of the enemy. In the book of Ephesians, it was clear. The Bible helped us to understand that you must stand there for having girded your waist with the truth. The Bible teaches us in the book of Ephesians that you must put on the breastplate of righteousness. You must shod yourself with the gospel of peace. And above all, you must take up the shield of faith so that you could quench the fiery darts that are sent your way. You should put on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You see, we are prepared and we have been given the tools and the wherewith to withstand the times of testing. So, so if, if, if God is giving us these resources, it stands to reason that there is going to be a need to use these resources. Am I right about it? It's, it, it, it in other words, you don't have an umbrella if you don't think it's going to be rain one day. You don't prepare yourself with warm clothing if you live in the area where there's cold weather. So God is preparing us with these elements and these resources because he knows that life must take its course. He understands that challenges will come up against you. You are not going to live in a bubbled world where everybody is like-minded and nobody will upset you. But by the way, people in the church will upset you and they're supposed to be like-minded. So he prepares you to walk in that place of authority knowing that he that had begun this work in you is able to bring it to pass because he understands that there are going to be times that you're going to trip and fall, but he reminds us that his right hand is there available to us to pick us up. Amen. He reminds us that he's not going to let us fall by the wayside, but he'll stay with us even if we make our bed in hell. So there are things that God has already prepared us for, and he is ready to transfer the power to us. The Bible says, upon their return, the disciples began to be excited and they began to, to bring this great report to Jesus uh, 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 after he had sent them out to, to, to investigate and to, and, and to seek out the areas in which he was going. Jesus was about to embark upon a mission, and so he sent the disciples ahead of him, all where he was supposed to go. And they came back, and they were excited, and the Bible says they returned, and they began to tell him, look, hey, man, uh, 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 even the demons are, uh, are subject to us. And Jesus said to them, he says, yeah, I saw Satan fall like lightning from the heavens. In other words, what I drew from that was he saw him fall like lightning, meaning it was a sudden fall. He fell suddenly from heaven. It was a quick thing. It was a visible thing. And it was an irreversible thing. You see, if I could get you to understand what I saw when he said that was, that's how fast and that's how quick and that's how much you can put the devil under your feet. So when I hear people saying the devil is messing with me, I am led to believe you have not experienced yet the transfer of power from God. Because if the devil is messing with you, 
you should have the authority to command him where to be. I wish I had a witness today. If the devil is messing with you and you keep on telling people the devil is messing with you, it means you have no resource in you to put the devil under your feet. I would like to liken this this morning for the, for the purpose of simplicity to the transfer of power and to use probably the concept of a contract. And I'm sure maybe, I believe maybe most of us here and viewing have at some point in time entered into a contract. I would like to liken it a little bit to more so to trying to obtain a mortgage, if you may. And you go to a mortgage lender to seek a mortgage for the purchase of a home. I would like to entreat you to say and to understand that your mortgage, to obtain it, means that you have to go through a process. Stay with me. If you're planning to buy a home and you begin to go through the process, you will begin to go searching and looking for the location where you want to buy a home. You will go looking and when you see different homes, you would want to see the inside and you would want to see the outside and you would want to investigate the neighborhood and you would want to know what the school systems are, and you would want to know what all the reasons that would cause you to purchase this home. So you have an exercise pre-buying a home. I want to liken that to Jesus about to embark upon a mission, and he sends the 70 to go to the locations where he is going, because he anticipates some things may not be the way it should be. Just like when you go to the neighborhoods, not every street in your neighborhoods is good. Not every neighbor in your neighborhood is likable. But, uh, 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 can I take this a little bit? When you are purchasing a home, there are things that you would expect to be good in the area and not so good. So not only do you want to know about the good stuff, you want to know also about the not so good stuff. And if the not so good stuff outweighs the good stuff, you probably won't choose that area. So Jesus sends them on the mission to check it out. Because he anticipates there's some not so good stuff. And the Bible says that they came back and reported that the demons were subject to them. So let me go back a little bit and change it back course to obtaining the mortgage. In order to obtain the mortgage, now you've seen the home. Now you like the home. Now you plan this is the home. Now you got to qualify. You got to be qualified. Can you afford the home? What kind of interest rate you going to get based on your credit rating? You got to go through a process of being approved for the loan. But I want to insert this little piece right here because everybody is pre-approved. Ever notice you get all these mail that says you're pre-approved? Nobody don't know you from Jack, but you're pre-approved. Nobody even know if you're alive, but you're pre-approved. You get mailed for pre-approved, but the thing is when you decide to take up the pre-approval option, they tell you whether you're approved or not. Huh? All of a sudden, once they get your name and your social security number, oh no, you're no longer approved. But you're pre-approved anyhow. You see, my point to you is, with God, everyone is pre-approved. God, everyone, whether you're a Christian, whether you're Muslim, whether you're a Buddhist, whatever you are, you're pre-approved. 
But you only become approved for heaven when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. But you're pre-approved. For the Bible says he gave his only begotten son for he loved everyone. He didn't love you based on your ethnicity. He didn't love you based on your race. He didn't love you based on the color of your skin. He loved you because you were created by him before time and eternity. So that made you pre-approved. But now you got to qualify, follow with me this morning, for the transfer of power, for the transfer of the anointing, for the transfer of the power to put those things to flight, for the transfer of the power to speak those things that are not as though they were, for the transfer of power to trample on serpents and scorpions. You're pre-approved, but you got to qualify. It doesn't matter if you have a job or not, you're pre-approved. Doesn't matter if you know somebody or not, you're pre-approved. Doesn't matter if your credit score is 5 or 755, you're pre-approved. So everyone is pre-approved for citizenship in heaven. But you got to go through the qualification process. You got to go through the qualification for power and for authority. But these must be received before you receive the transfer of power. I want to I wanna say it like this. You must abide by the terms of a mortgage lender in order to get a mortgage loan. Am I right about it? You must meet the qualifications and the demands of the mortgage lender if you are going to have the home that you say you want to have. In other words, they may want you to have a down payment. In other words, they may want your credit rating to be of a certain level. They may want you to have a job to show consistency and how you're going to pay the loan back. They may want to know that you are dependable person to trust with their money. So there is a qualification process. When you fulfill the lender's expectation, here's what happens. They, they don't give you money. What they do is they purchase the property that you like, that you want. So you want this property that costs $500,000. The lender trusts you. Ah, help me, Holy Ghost. I'm going somewhere. The lender trusts you enough that they say, I am going to put down the $500,000 and purchase this property for you. And I trust you to own up to the lender's contract stipulations for the next 30 years or 15, whichever it is, as far as duration. So there is a, a coming together of agreement. And here's what happens. When the contract is signed and the paperwork is signed, you, the recipient, is handed a transfer of deed. You now have the deed to that property. You now have the rights to that property. You now can say with confidence, this is my house. You then are given a key to open the door to that property. You can take possession and the rights of passage to that property. You can make claim to that land and that property because your name is now official in the record ledger of the county or the state in which you have purchased that property. You are now referred to as the owner of that property and that is according to the law of the land. So you have been transferred with the power to own that property. Jesus, the Bible says, 
When they came back and they said, oh my God, the demons were subject to us. Because we went ahead of you, dear God, and we were talking to them demons. And we were commanding and we were telling them where to go and what to do. And they were reacting and they were running from us. And Jesus said to them, I give unto you. Are you all ready? The authority to trample on the serpents and the scorpions. He says, I give unto you the authority. In the Greek, the translation of the word authority comes from the Greek word exousia. And it means authority or rights. Uh, help me, let me go a little further. I'm almost done too. And then he says, I give you all power over the enemy. And that word power comes from the Greek word dunamis, which means force or power means miracle and then he says and nothing shall in any way harm you and that word comes from the Greek word kratos which means vigor and strength what am I trying to say to you church this morning God is ready to transfer the power to you because the enemy is not going to stop at nothing to stop you. But God said, I will give unto you the exousia and the dudamos and the kratos. And when you are inhabited with that, and when you have the power to trample on the serpents and the scorpions. And when you have the power and the authority to speak those things that are not as though they were. And when you have the ability to stand in the strength of God and not be moved. When you have that ability, God is announcing to you today, I am transferring to you because you're qualified. Because you have shown the faithfulness uh, because you believe beyond the shadow of a doubt uh, that if God be for you uh, it doesn't matter who's against you you have stood the test of time uh, because you have been attempted and you have been tried and you have been tested and all kinds of stuff has come down at you all year long but you have stood faithful you have given praise uh, when you were crying you were giving praise and worship uh, when you didn't feel like it uh, you were talking to me when nobody wanted to talk to you you stayed focused uh, and now you're being transferred with the transfer of authority you're being transferred with a transfer of anointing God is saying I'm giving you the power that you don't have to run you don't have to hide you don't have to cry no more you don't have to run and and recoil and say I can't take it no more you can stand up and command if God be for me so it shall be and you can tell the devil you are no longer in authority you are now under my feet and that's where you will stay because I have the exousia power of God you can tell the devil now I'm not running from you no more because I have the Kratos power of God transferred into me I have the dunamos the anointing of God in me that allows me to tell you devil you cannot harm me you cannot hurt me you cannot take away from me what God has given to me it's got to be a place it's got to be a time when you come eligible to receive the power and the transfer of God. If you're in the body of Christ, if you're in the body of Christ, and I'm going to say this without fear or trepidation of any backlash, but if you are in the body of Christ, for as long as you say you have been, and you are still fearful, and you are still running, then you have not yet received the power of God. You are just a participant in a gathering for God. But when you receive the power of God, you can speak and command and you could demand and you could declare and you could decree according to the transferred authority that God has placed in you.
And when you speak those things, and when you command those things, and when you declare those things, and when you decree those things, you don't have to worry or fear or live in doubt because the word of God cannot be doubted. The promises of God are not to be feared. If God stands in you, you can stand against the enemy. If God is standing in you, you don't have to fear the enemy. If God is standing in you, you can declare that God is going to fill me and meet all my needs according to his riches and glory. So if you are running from or fearful of sickness and fearful of evil spirits and fearful of financial deficiencies, or fearful of mental and emotional distresses in your life and diseases in your life, then you have not yet experienced the transfer of power. I urge you today, I urge you today to qualify yourself. And to qualify yourself, let me make this come back around in the circle. And to qualify yourself is to present yourself before God, holy and acceptable, in his sight. So if you're not holy and acceptable in his sight, think about the mortgage. Maybe you have all the other criteria, but not the down payment. And that will disqualify you. Maybe you have all the other criteria, but a low credit score. And that will disqualify you. Maybe you have all the criteria, but you don't have your mind set on a specific place. That will disqualify you. And so, if you present yourself to God, holy and acceptable, there is nothing to disqualify you. Because then God knows he can trust you and you are faithful to him and you will be qualified and you will receive the transfer of power. See, God can't trust you with the transfer of power if you're not going to use it the way God wants you to. You don't use it for revenge. You don't use... Oh, help me. This is a whole other lane I just moved into. You don't use it for revenge. You don't use it for your personal vendettas. When God gives you the transfer of power, it comes, the power is an umbrella. That under that umbrella sits wisdom, grace. It sits all these different criteria, which when you are about to use, encompasses all these areas. So you don't have power without wisdom. You don't get power without wisdom. You don't get power without grace. You can't have power without compassion. You can't have power for the wrong reason. Power is given unto us. For the Bible says very clearly, and here's the ending of it. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you. Hear that? So in other words, don't rejoice because you have power. You're getting it. Don't rejoice because you have power. But rather, rejoice because your names a written in heaven. Rejoice because God has qualified you and accepted you to handle the power. So this is not for you to use haphazardly to accomplish things that you should not have. You don't use the power to capture somebody else's husband or somebody else's wife. You don't use the power to do things that are not of God. You use the power for the things that are of God, for the things that are already written, for the things that are already declared and decreed, for the things that God has already seen you at the finishing line to receive. And so, my fine brothers and sisters, God is ready to transfer the power to you if you qualify. For you that are watching, let me pray with you before we go back to the studio. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I pray God that the word of God as given to me to share with the people today would be received, would be understood, would be clear and concise with clarity from heaven. That they would understand that this power that you're about to entrust in them is to further their enrichment and their development in the word of God and in the things of the kingdom. I ask, Father, that those that would come to you and give you that authority, that power of attorney over their spirit, that authority to take them and qualify them to receive your power, that this day and from this moment on, as they declare you as Lord and Savior, as they say to you, you are my Lord and Savior and I renounce everything that is not of you, that you will receive them, qualify them, and grant them the power and the access to heavens and kingdoms wardrobes. This I ask and pray in the name of Jesus to you, dearly beloved, in Jesus' name. I would conclude by saying to you, visit us on our website. Click on the link to the website, www.divineharvestministries.org. From there, go to our Facebook page, like us on Facebook, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe to us on YouTube, send us your comments, your concerns, your well wishes, your offerings, whatever you want to do, go on the website. Get a hold of us. Call us with your prayer requests. We want to hear from you. And until next time, God bless you. And remember, it's already decreed and declared. You're blessed.